told the kids over and over, I do not want to go to the ER during this pandemic. A Saturday evening, the boys were playing with slingshots and paintballs, shooting at targets. They had worked so hard all day. We sanded and painted the front of our house. We were getting ready to watch the online service. Annie told the boys, don't shoot each other in the eye. We started to get ready to watch the weekend service and Titus walked into the house holding his eye. He said, I got hit in the eye with a paintball. It hurts, but I think I'm gonna be okay. Why didn't you wear glasses? We have plenty of them. sat in the living room and enjoyed the singing and the message. I looked over at Titus and he was sitting on the couch. He was staring off into space. He looked so tired. He had worked so hard that day on the house. We finished our service and Titus said, I can't see. The inside of his eye had filled with blood his vision was blocked. When I was a teenager, I learned that our sense of sight is wonderful, but our ability to perceive the world around us is extremely limited. Our eyes are sensitive to a particular range of frequencies. We call that visible light. Visible light is just a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. That includes radio waves, microwaves, cell phone waves, infrared, or visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays, gamma rays, and cosmic rays. In a very real sense, all of this is light. And God said, let there be light. Nearly all of it is light that we can't see. In the visible spectrum, there are different wavelengths and different properties. We think we see so much, but all of us are walking around in a world full of glory and wonder of light and color, but we're almost totally blind. Does this mean that our sense of sight is not that amazing? Not at all. It means that the universe around us is infinitely more wonderful than anything we have ever dreamed. If someone says they won't believe it until they see it, that person has a very narrow view of the world around them. Our vision is limited. It is in the brain that we see and hear and detect odors and taste our food and sense the world around us. It's a good thing this is so. If seeing were done only in the eye, everything would be upside down. Just like your camera lens, the lens of the eye forms the image upside down. The image is then inverted by the brain so it appears right side up. What would happen if a person wore a lens system to form the image right side up? Well, the brain would immediately invert the image so it would be upside down. But if a person wore this all the time, would this condition be permanent? Scientists designed a pair of glasses that would try to answer that question. I guess it was rock, paper, scissors to decide who would wear them. That's right, me. He seemed to walk okay, seeing everything upside down. But he said the worst part was it made him seasick. They did their first test, sitting down. Even that wasn't so easy. The simplest tasks were at first impossible. No amount of concentration or effort could overcome the compulsion to reach in the wrong direction. The inverting goggles were worn every waking moment during the entire experiment. Anytime the goggles were removed, the eyes were closed or covered. 
Walking to work upside down was an exhausting experience. Oh! He said he had to do this to reorient his brain. It also caused quite a stir in the neighborhood. What is wrong with that guy? Where did he get a pair of those? I wonder if he's a bird watcher. Gradually it became easier to get around in an upside down world. By a slow and painful process, the image in the brain actually flipped. At this point, the scientist decided to put together a demonstration showing that his brain really had flipped. Hey Joe, watch out, DC! The test with the motorcycle went so well, they decided, let's put him in a plane, where visual coordination and depth perception are even more critical. He flew for more than an hour, performing several flight maneuvers. Would you like some pretzels? Performing this experiment with the upside down goggles, they were trying to prove how important it is that seeing is done in the brain and not just in the eye. We know there are things that we can't see. We don't really have a problem believing there are things that we can't see just by using our own eyes. You're aware of our limitations. That's become the foundation of modern science. But for millennia, humankind used their sense to explain the world. Alchemists mixed their magic potions. Astrologists tried to predict the future. Phrenologists measured bumps on the head to determine their intelligence. The age of science was born when we stopped trusting our senses and developed instruments to overcome our limitations. This is relatively new. When people were able to move beyond their senses, there was a sharp upturn, an explosion of scientific progress. With all the potential for good, this scientific development has brought us crisis after crisis. Why do we face this crisis today? We have developed a scientific confidence, but in the spiritual realm, we are in the dark ages mentally. We seem to feel that the spiritual realm is empty, a realm with no values and no fixed laws. We often don't want to recognize rules that we don't make ourselves. We want to develop our own standards and make our own set of rules for living. We are committed to trusting ourselves. We build our own theories and philosophies on the meager scraps of information coming from the limited sources that we see. And we are even more blind in what we see of the spiritual realm. We will hear people say, I have my own religious beliefs. Can you imagine us taking Titus to the doctor and a guy comes up to us off the street and he says, I have my own theories about how the human eye works. How about you take this medicine? All your problems will go away. You would want to see a real doctor. You would warn people about the weirdo. He is ridiculous.
ridiculous in our scientific physical realm. But is this any more ridiculous in a realm that is far more important? If in the physical realm there are absolute values and fixed laws, isn't it logical to assume there is a master plan in the spiritual realm? If we dedicate ourselves to obeying that plan, could we expect a similar explosive result? The big question, where do we find these absolute and unchanging moral and spiritual laws? We find a partial answer in nature. Spiritual laws have a parallel in physical laws. The law of cause and effect operates in both realms. History is also a source of information. History is a record of humans operating through these laws. In the history of nations and individuals, we see the result of obedience to God's laws and the tragic consequences of disobedience. And we have this book, the Bible, the Word of God to man. Wherever it has been loved and believed, it has transformed lives and altered history. How can we know that this is the law of God? This is a beautiful opportunity to put the scientific method to work. Put these laws to the test of personal challenge, personal experience in your own life. What should you expect? An explosive, contagious change. That the words salvation and conversion and born again bring on a wonderful new personal meaning. How is Titus's eye? The doctors examined him and said that everything looks good. He will be fine.